Louis was born on April 25, 1214, in Poissy, France, near Paris, the son of Louis the Lion and Blanche of Castile. He was baptized in La Collegial Notre Dame Church. Tutors of his mother's choosing taught him Latin, public speaking, writing, military arts, and government. Louis was nine years old when his grandfather Philip II died and his father became King Louis VIII. Louis VIII would rule for a mere three years. Louis was 12 years old when his father died on November 8, 1226, thus ending the childhood of young Louis. Louis was crowned king within the month of his father's death at Reims Cathedral on November 29, 1226. His mother Blanche ruled France as regent during his minority. Louis's mother instilled in him devout Christianity. She is once recorded to have said, I love you, my dear son, as much as a mother can love her child, but I would rather see you dead at my feet than you should ever commit a mortal sin. On May 27, 1224, Louis married Margaret of Provence. She was crowned in the Cathedral of Sens the next day. The new queen's religious zeal made her a well-suited partner for the king and they are attested to have gotten along well, enjoying writing together, reading, and listening to music. Louis is often referred to as the model Christian monarch, due in part to his extraordinary charity to the poor. He not only instructed others to feed the poor, he fed them himself with his own hands. From his very childhood the king took pity on the poor and afflicted, and the custom was that wherever the king went, 120 poor persons should every day have an abundant meal in his house of bread, wine, meat, or fish. This affection for the poor led him to take matters into his own hands, ensuring that everyone was fed before he began eating. Louis ate daily with old men and cripples, to whom he gave the same dishes that he himself ate. And when they had finished their food, they carried away a certain sum in money. Louis also grappled with persistent conflicts involving some of the most influential nobles in his kingdom. He instigated significant reforms in the French legal system. He abolished trials by ordeal, endeavored to terminate private wars, and incorporated the presumption of innocence into criminal proceedings. Louis IX's reign is often marked as an economical and political zenith for medieval France, and he held immense respect throughout Christendom. His reputation as a fair and judicious ruler led him to being solicited to mediate disputes beyond his own kingdom. In 1230, Louis forbade all forms of usury, defined at the time as taking any interest and therefore covering most banking activities. Louis also oversaw the disputation of Paris in 1240, in which Paris's Jewish leaders were imprisoned and questioned about the strong anti-Christian passages in the Talmud. As a result of the disputation, Pope Gregory IX declared that all copies of the Talmud should be seized and destroyed. In 1242, Louis ordered the burning of 12,000 Talmudim. In 1250, Louis headed the Seventh Crusade to Egypt. Louis and his followers landed in Egypt in June of 1249 and began their campaign with the capture of the port Damietta. On February 8, 1250, Louis lost his army at the Battle of Farisker and was captured by the Egyptians. His release was eventually negotiated in return for a ransom of 400,000 livres, roughly 80 million US dollars today, and the surrender of the city of Damietta. Upon his liberation from captivity in Egypt, Louis devoted four years to fortifying the Kingdom of Jerusalem. He generously utilized his resources to aid the Crusaders in reconstructing their defenses and actively engaged in diplomatic endeavors with the Islamic powers of Syria and Egypt. In spring 1254, Louis and his remaining forces made their return to France, and a parliament held at Paris on March 24, 1226, Louis and his three sons took the cross. On hearing the reports of the missionaries, Louis resolved to land at Tunis, and he ordered his younger brother Charles of Anjou to join him. Crusaders, among whom was the English prince Edward Longshanks, landed at Carthage July 17, 1270, but disease broke out in the camp.
Louis was sick with dysentery and died in his tent on August 25, 1270. He was 56 years old. Before his passing, he was able to advise his son, Philip II, on how to live a good life and to be a good king. Among his last words to his son were echoes of what Louis's mother, Blanche, instilled in him. You should with all your strength shun everything which you believe to be displeasing to God, and you ought especially to be resolved not to commit mortal sin, no matter what may happen, and should permit all of your limbs to be sewn off, and suffer every manner of torment, rather than fall knowingly into mortal sin. Louis's final words were, Into thy hands I commend my soul. In 1297, Pope Boniface VIII proclaimed the canonization of Louis. He is the only French king to be declared a saint. It is said that praying to Louis has resulted in miracles. Louis's bones were interred in the Royal Necropolis at St. Denis in May 1271.